A power struggle at City Hall, a moderate mayor in a clash with the progressive city council. The point starts right now. Mayor Eric Adams is involved in an increasingly volatile tug of war with the city council over who gets the final say over agency heads. He's determined to win, but will he? So, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the battle lines are drawn. The city council wants the right to approve 21 different agency heads, not police or not fire, but things like sanitation and buildings and health. And they point out to the fact that in the state government, the Senate gets to approve advice and consent on all the appointments. So why should it happen in the state and not the city? Why do you think it's a bad idea in New York City? Well, I think the city uh, forefathers, uh, those who um, wrote uh, the beginning of how they want this done, uh, laid out the reason why uh, some of this stuff uh, moves at a very swift pace. Uh, they presented their proposal. We disagree with it, and um, we're going to just stand firm on. Um, I have the obligation and responsibility to get hundreds of thousands of people who voted for me as mayor to appoint commissioners to execute plans. That's really timely on some of these plans that we have to do. But why should the city be special and not have the same kinds of advice and consent as the state? No, I don't think we're special. Uh, I'm not. I did not create these rules. <laughs> these are the same rules that previous mayors have been under. Uh, these are the same rules that have been in place, and they've been working for uh, for our city. And we just disagree. And just the same as I shared, um, I wouldn't want to pick the chairs of committees. I don't want to of the city council. City council have committee chairs, public safety, land use, etc. I don't want to say to the speaker, speaker, I want to pick your committee chairs. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. So is this a clash of philosophies, the moderate more mayor versus a, quote, progressive city council? I, I don't know. Um, I think Adrian and I cut from the same cloth, uh, both based out high school uh, alumni. Uh, when you look at what we have accomplished, 95 percent of the things we agree on, we've, we've been able to really get housing built, public safety, manage the migrant crises. So I think that we are from the same community, the same mindset. Are there those in the council who have extreme views that are just counter to mine? Like, I don't I don't believe we should move children of uh, school safety agents from school. I don't believe we should uh, take down our police department, dis disband our police department. I don't believe, believe we should have people protesting the street, uh, calling for the destruction of America. We just have a philosophical disagreement. That's not what I believe the speaker is. So in this debate, Mm -hmm. There was a city councilwoman from Queens, Vicki Palladino, who said that giving them the ability to advise and consent on these uh, agency heads, quote, would lock in progressive control over this entire city. Is that something that you agree with? That if they were to go through and have the ability to approve your appointments, that it would lock in progressive control? Well, I think that uh, Councilwoman Palladino, uh, you know, shared what her thoughts were. And I've been very clear that the people of the city, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, elect a mayor, uh, not just a small number. They want to hold the mayor responsible. I want to be held responsible if trash is not picked up. I want to be held responsible uh, if our children are not educated, as the, um, the state gave us mayoral accountability. The mayor should be held responsible for the delivery of goods and services in the city, not get into a political back and forth with uh, the council to determine who the commission is going to be. So your response to this was to appoint a charter revision commission that's supposed to make recommendations by August 5th. The question is, what do you expect them to do? And one of the things that I thought was sort of interesting is that you wanted them to look at contributions to public safety. Does, was this a reaction to um, council bills, which, like, for example, how many stops, which would try to dictate what happens in the police department? Do you think that this is a, not a good thing? I mean, should the council be able to dictate police policy, or should that be left up to the mayor and the police commissioner? Well, it, this was not a response uh, to uh, their actions, their bill. 
In April, early April, we received a letter from constituents in the city, a cross-section of constituents, who asked to meet with me. They met with me in May. Right. And during that meeting, they asked, can we put a charter uh, commission in place? We uh, basically agreed at that time. And when we notified the council that we were going to do a charter revision, they called us and say, hey, by the way, we're going to do this bill. So we were not responding to that. I want to be clear on that. So, but here's the question. Yes. What do you want them to do in terms of public safety? I mean, do you think that there should be something in the charter that says that the mayor and the police commissioner set police policy? And it wasn't what I wanted, as I stated. They came to me. But do you think that there's a feeling? Oh, I, 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 my personal belief, yeah, yeah. I believe that we have to be very careful when we do things that impact public safety. Public safety is the prerequisite to our and prosperity. And you were very upset with the How Many Stops Act and other things because you argued at the time that this would make it more difficult for police to do their jobs. I wasn't the only one upset. We heard from a countless number of New Yorkers, uh, and I believe that there's just a philosophical disagreement. I am really surprised at how many uh, lawmakers uh, really see the police as an enemy and not part of the foundation of our safety. But I say all the time, something happens, people call 911. So here's the question, though. Yes. Would you, I'm not telling you to say, yeah. I want the Charter Revision Commission to do this. I know you're not ordering them to do that, but right. would you like to see something in the what they come up with that would curtail the ability of the city council to set police policy and tell police how to police. I want a cross-section of New Yorkers that are making up the charter revision, uh, Carlos uh, Cicero, uh, uh, all those who are part of it. I want them to sit down. Reverend Herbert Daughtry, who has been a real advocate for police reform. I want them to sit down and look at how public safety should be dealt with in our city, uh, how do we sh should we deal with budgeting issues in our city. This is a great opportunity to do some amazing things with a charter revision. But as a former police officer and as the mayor and as the person who appoints the police commissioner and has more than a working knowledge of how the police department should operate, does it trouble you that people who have no working knowledge of the police department can then dictate how the police can go about doing their job. Oh, oh without a doubt. It does trouble me. And uh, I don't think people know the delicacies of proper policing. I advocated for proper policing as a police officer, as a state senator and a borough president. And I think of uh, this black and white philosophy of policing without understanding the complexities, complexities surrounding it, I think we can make huge mistakes that can have long-term implications. We're seeing it already with recidivism. We're seeing uh, the person who shot Detective Dilly was arrested 20 times and person in a car with him that had a gun uh, was out on a gun charge and now there's a gun found in the car. So we're seeing action, everything from shoplifting, um, how do you have um, uh, such a small number of people who are arrested 7,600 times for, for different crimes in the city. So we're seeing the impact of those that really are hurting what I think are, are public safety concerns. So would you as mayor like to see something in the charter that specifies that the mayor and the police Commissioner are the ones in charge of setting police policy, not the city council. Well, first of all, we are. We, we set police. That they keep passing we, these bills you don't there's like. There's difference between laws and policy. Your there's the, there's different between laws and policies. Uh, the policies that we, you see but set out. But what about the laws they pass that you hate? I, and and I can disagree with that. But this is the system of governance but the that we have. charter could change that. And I think that those who are going to sit down and ask us to meet with them in April, uh, they have an opportunity now to determine what the charter is going to look like. I respect the system of government. This our system of government states that there should be checks and balances, and I respect that. I don't have to like all the checks and balances that, that are put in place, but I think this is a great system that we have, and I respect it, and I'm going to utilize uh, my tools to make sure I keep the city safe for working class people. But it's clearly been a tense time between you and the city council over several issues, not only police policy, and but also, you know, in terms of the appointments and other issues have come up. I know you agree on the budget and that's part of the job of both agencies, but I'm wondering if you think that members of the city council, especially the progressive members of the city council that you clash with, actually represent the views of their constituents. I, over the last uh, week, took a look at the voter turnout in all 51 
um, city council districts. And I want to tell you, there's 173,000 people in every city council district. Some of these council members get elected with 1,000 votes. 1,200 votes. The biggest one I think I saw was 20,000 votes out of 173,000 people. Do you think that this is, these people represent the people that they are elected to represent? Well, I, first of all, I think it's alarming when we don't have the voter participation that come that come out. I was in certain council districts, and people were saying they strongly opposed some of the actions, particularly like the How Many Stops Act, and but they didn't vote. They threw up their hands and said they don't believe in the voting system. We have to go out and participate in democracy in order for democracy to, to work. And so it is disheartening when you look at some of the numbers and see the low participation, and then you see people take actions that really are diame diametric opposed to what the everyday working class people want in a district. I have never, Marsha, went to one council district or senatorial or assembly district where people say, we don't want our police here. Just the opposite. So when I hear someone stand up advocating to uh, disband police departments, or some people say, we don't want police on the subway at all, I say, who are you representing? <laughs> you know, that is not what New York is want. <laughs> well, Mr. Rear, I have more voter questions, but we'll have to leave it right there for now. But we'll be right back with more from Mayor Adams. Mm -hmm. We're back talking to Mayor Eric Adams. One more voting question. <laughs> yes. I wonder how you feel about a bill in Albany that's supposed to pass, I think, between now and next week, that would make all the um, elections in New York in even years. So that would mean that the mayor, the city council, would be running at the same time as the governor, the uh, congressman, the president, if it was a presidential election year. Good idea, bad idea, how do you feel about it? Well, number one, it saves money of these various election cycles, uh, I think will increase voter participation. I need to read through the bill to get the in-depth analysis and ask those who really understand these number crunching uh, what their thoughts are. But conceptually, uh, I don't see a problem with I don't know it's the best thing to have in a complete change of government at one time. Uh, you want to sort of stagnate it a little. Uh, but uh, conceptually, I like the idea, but I'll have to dig into the bill more. So what your, your reservation has to do with changing every part of government right. all at the same time because you think you need to have some consistency. Some form of consistency on the state level, on the city level, on the federal level. Uh, but uh, if, if there's a way to stagnate it to protect that, uh, conceptually, I think it's a good idea. So another thing that Governor Hochul is talking about doing is to outlaw um, uh, cell phones, actually the ones that connect to the internet, in schools. She would allow kids to take regular phones into schools that they can text with, just not that can connect to the internet. Right. Good idea, bad idea, limited. I love it. I, lo I think phones in schools are big distractions. I understand that, at, particularly after 9 11, uh, parents wanted to have uh, contact with their children. I respect that. Uh, but it is a huge distraction from bullying uh, to communications. Uh, there's a real distraction. Schools should be a place for learning, not for all that other stuff that's going on. So you would support her bill that would outlaw cell phones in schools in New York State and in New York City? Uh, I need to, the, the devil is always in the details. I need to look through it, but conceptually, uh, I think school, uh, phones are huge distractions. And I'm hoping that the school communities can come together and really look at that. We, don't, we shouldn't even need a law each school community to sh should say what policies we want around this phones. So um, congestion pricing, another, yes. another big issue. It's supposed to start in New York, New York City, at the end of uh, June, which is this month. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. As you know, congestion pricing is supposed to raise a billion dollars mm -hmm. a year that could be bonded. But there are new reports that the MTA, that's not enough that the MTA needs another $6 billion to weatherproof the system from climate change so you won't have those floods and all the things that are stopping the system. Where is that money going to come from? Uh, huge question, great question. Uh, I, I believe we need help on a federal level and on a state level. 
And I. So we're talking I'm, another tax. We're talking the fare box. We're talking New York City. I've long said I hope that New York City can manage its own transportation system, but the dollars need to come with it. Uh, I think New York is who they don't realize. I actually go on the subway system all the time. They think the mayor's in charge of the MTA. We're not. Uh, the mayor was not in charge of congestion pricing. Uh, the state uh, turned it over to the MTA, uh, but we have to properly fund our MTA to make sure that it's the first class transportation system. But the federal government hasn't been that um, forthcoming in terms of dollars for, for transportation in New York City. There's not a lot of love for New York City and Washington. So if you can't get the money from the federal government, is this going to mean that they're suddenly going to raise the congestion fee in order to, to weatherproof the system? I, mean, where, I, I hope not. We have not. to do it. I, I hope not. And we do, because climate change is real, and we're seeing the byproduct of that. And it's going to be a combination of the federal government and our state lawmakers. And we listen, we have great leaders up there. Carl, Assemblyman uh, Hasty has has always been an advocate for New York City, uh, Majority Leader uh, Andrew Stewart Cousin. Uh, they understand, and I cannot say enough about what the governor and those two leaders did for New York City during the last, last budgetary cycle. They knew what we went through during the migrants and asylum seeker crisis. They really stepped up for, for us. And matter of fact, they called me and said, we're going to be there for New York. So another hot topic in yes. New York City, pot shops. Mm -hmm. There are... I don't know, 15,000 illegal, maybe 2,000 at this point, illegal pot shops. Mm -hmm. You've taken a stab at it. You've, I think you've closed about 200. Yes, inspected over 300, closed over uh, 200, and we're really starting to get, get our groove. We had a major bust over the weekend in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I, I've said this before. I believe there's a major entity that's treating this like uh, a chain store network. The products are the same, uh, the same methodology. So why don't you find this network? That's what we're doing. We uh, we 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 think we found a main artery in, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, but we have to continue to drill down on it. But see, here's something that I've noticed. Yes. So a lot of these pot shops have decided, oh, they're going to come after me now. So they're now calling themselves healthful snack shops <laughs> and if you go into them there's no pot there's no cbd there's nothing on the shelves just mm -hmm. things that, that would pass muster but if you say hey listen do you have any pre-roll or do you have right. any flour they go in the back and they get the product so right. how are you going to stop these people when looking at it it looks normal well first of all i'm really blown away that you know all the terminology <laughs> let I me start <laughs> let me start with that <laughs> uh, but in addition to that well, excuse me you know the terminology <laughs> too just for the record you know but in addition to that the they're trying to get smarter and they have attorneys who are yeah, organizing so if they them. get smarter how are you going to we go have after to get them? smarter and the lawmakers must remain fluent we must make sure the law does not stagnate us and hurt the entire system and undermine the legalization of cannabis. And my biggest concern, Marsha, young people, when I speak to my teachers, they say, Eric, our children are high all the time. We're smelling uh, cannabis that's because on them. The, the stores are so close to school. And that's why we're targeting them. We're targeting them. We're going after those stores, and we're going to continue to close them down. We've been dogmatic. Anthony Miranda, the sheriff, has been amazing in this area. So we only have about one minute left, but yes. I have to ask you about Andrew Cuomo, who's increasingly um, active politically. Mm -hmm. Here's the question. Yes. You're a man who believes in second chances. Mm -hmm. Does he deserve a second chance, and does he have a political future? I, I, I think everyone deserves a second chance. If I didn't have a second chance, I wouldn't be sitting on this couch having a conversation with you. Uh, so this is all part of the process. The voters are going to determine who's going to be the next elected. We must uh, sell our product. And this, is, and this is going back to what I'm saying in that minute we have left, left about Adrian and I. Uh, you know, my biggest fear is that the three or four things we disagree in is going to overshadow what the first woman of color as a speaker, the first, second mayor of color, what we have have accomplished. We've navigated us through COVID, through migrants, through crime. Uh, I'm so proud of what Adrian has accomplished as a speaker. And I bet if you ask us, she'll say she's proud of what I've accomplished And that's as a all mayor. the time we have. We're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation does continue right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York. Thank you for joining me. It's a simple question. Should the government ban TikTok? New Yorkers have strong opinions. They're weighing in on your point.
Do you think that the United States should ban TikTok? Yes. Why? Because my kid loves it and I don't like him to be on it. Um, no. I don't no. think so. I don't think so either. I don't really have an opinion on that. Oh, I don't even use TikTok, so I don't know. I'm not in those different sites and everything, so I don't know. No. Why not? Be because I feel like, the, you know, it's a good source of media and uh, it's very entertaining. Everybody enjoyed to be joined TikTok, so why you want to ban it? If there wasn't TikTok, I think a lot of people would have nothing to do with their lives because there is a lot of people who just sit down and scroll through TikTok. So if they banned it, would it affect your life? Yeah, I think it would affect my life. No, I don't think so. Got Instagram reels. I think on some people, yes, that are really into the TikTok and being that I'm not. So maybe for those people it would. Not immensely, but I wouldn't like to see it because I just think that's the wrong direction to go in. I don't use it at all. I don't know how to work it. I don't care to use it, so it doesn't affect me. I don't know if it would necessarily affect my personal life, but um, I'm an actress, so it is one of my means of communicating with people in an audience. So There's a tremendous amount of commerce that's done on TikTok, and I think that that's unfair to limit those people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really say it would like, impact or yeah. affect it, but I think I definitely miss it because, I mean, I love TikTok. I scroll on it all the time. I think it's really funny. Why do you think that lawmakers want to ban TikTok? I don't know. They must have a reason. I don't know. Uh, I think they want to control what's being said. I don't care. I don't have no clue about that. I think people just see all the bad things on it and the negativity side. Because I think it can influence people to do the wrong things. I don't know. I feel like they don't want information to be spread, but it will be spread anyway through other sources. So, Should the United States ban TikTok? No. Because there is that China thing going on. What China thing? That's why they want to ban it, because they think that China controls it and that China would have access to your information. We have bigger problems in the U.S. than China.